Hello again YouTube, my name's Still Aussie and today I'd like to talk about one of the um, earliest home visual entertainment systems that was ever invented, the Pathé Frères Cock Projector. Um, it was a system that was first designed um, in about 1910-1911 by Arthur Roussel. Uh, it was patented in 1911 and it was designed by Pathé Frères to um, be used in relatively wealthy um, households uh, that had suddenly become interested in um, cinema and uh, visual entertainment. So let's look at this today in a little more detail. The machine, uh, film for this machine, has 20.5 frames per foot rather than the 16 frames per foot that you get with 35 mil. So it was also quite economical. The reels were usually something like um, the late 300s, maybe 400 uh, feet in length, so quite um, uh, economical. The machine has a manual uh, turning mechanism and a dynamo. This particular one is fitted with a 12 volt power supply to give it um, uh, uh, a lamp that's reasonably bright uh, without the dynamo. So let's um, thread, this, thread this up. You pull out a length that we need, pop it under the first roller, onto the large sprocket, lift up this retaining roller, make sure that the sprockets on both sides are in place. Remove the lamp housing, pop this into the um, gate, and there, has, uh, there are two uh, claws that grip the holes in the sprocket. Um, for each frame. We bring this up to the retaining roller on the underside of the sprocket and guide that in and you need to make sure that this has actually got into the sprockets on both sides. Like that. Then at your fashionable soiree in Paris back in 1912 you Crank to film up, your audience to gasp in amazement. Crank. Uh, this cost $30 in America. Um, it was quite um, popular at the time, before the First World War, and indeed by about 1920, something like um, 1400 titles were available in 28mm. Let's have a look at the other side. There would be a belt going to the dynamo down here if I was using that. Um, there really isn't that much to show here. You can see the um, uh, shutter mechanism would be over there. Um, so let's have a look at some of the film running. The film that happens to be in the machine at the moment is the Chateaus of the Loire and I think you can see on this backlit example of the 28mm film the way in which you've got three sprocket holes on one side for every one sprocket hole on the other. Uh, so let's turn the lights out and have a look at uh, the quality of the image.
Well, things started to change after the First World War. Um, uh, the fortunes of the 28mm format um, fell away, not least because um, Pathé Frere had uh, developed its own much smaller uh, gauge film, 9.5mm, that was very much more economical and they uh, provided an enormous uh, library of titles uh, for use with that. And of course also uh, Kodak developed the 16mm gauge. Um, so both these developments really meant that after the Second World War um, the popularity of the 28mm gauge uh, declined and I think by about 1934 um, we see the end of the Pathé Freire uh, name and certainly by that time 9.5mm uh, and 16mm um, had really uh, taken a foothold. But nevertheless uh, what we're looking at is pretty much the dawn of uh, home video entertainment and um, so for that it's uh, worth um, recording alone. Thanks very much for watching. I'm still Aussie like I was at the beginning. Bye.